You are live on IG. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. Hey, guys. Welcome to the first ever Lou Fuse Lacrosse at home live stream. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Hope everyone is safe and at home right now. Uh, we miss you guys a whole lot, and we can't wait to be back on the field with you guys very soon. Um, quick introduction. I think most of you guys know who I am. I'm Coach Dylan. I run the Lou Fuse Lacrosse program but I have an awesome special guest with us here today. Coach Natalie, I'm the Director of Girls Development here. We are we're super excited um, to come to you every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and give you guys a, a nice little 45 minute workout um, that you guys can either follow along and do from home or watch at a later time on YouTube and do, um, or just take bits and pieces and work on your own um, doing these things. Uh, so make sure you tune in every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, we'll be having this going on. Also check your inboxes as we've sent out detailed plans where um, they consist of, of six day workouts um, with one day off a week. So hopefully you guys are still keeping your stick, bodies, mind, everything in shape as we're at home. Um, so to get now, get down to it. So we're gonna have 45 minutes here today. Uh, it's gonna be broken up into three different sections. Uh, the first one will be stick work. That's gonna be 15 minutes. The second is gonna be dodging and footwork, that's gonna be 15 minutes. And then the third one is gonna be some of our favorite wall ball routines and how you can practice uh, hitting the wall. These first two 15 minutes though, are things you can do in a small space. Whether you only have three feet, you have 10 feet, 12 feet to work with, these are things you can do in small spaces, even while it's rainy outside. So to start off, um, let's start by talking about stick work. So stick work, as most of you lacrosse players know, is probably the most important fundamental um, in lacrosse. Uh, being good with your stick makes you go from being a good player to a great player. It's, uh, it's truly the great separator. You could maybe not be the biggest, strongest, or fastest, but if you have great stick work, it's what is gonna elevate you to that next level. Um, some of our favorite uh, pro players that uh, have amazing stick work on the girl side, what would you like? Yeah, so now some of my favorite stick work players are Marie McCool. Um, also, you've got Kayla Trainer, who's awesome stick work too as well. Um, they're really good at getting in the eight and really keeping the stick in tight, and they're able to get those little shots off. So that's what we'll be working on today too as well. We also have some guys in Yeah, I love watching um, Mikey Powell. Videos of his stick work are amazing. John Grant Jr., check him out. And then of course, you guys probably all are familiar with Lyle Thompson. Um, check out any of their videos on YouTube, search those names. There's a lot of stick work routines that they have. So some of the stuff we're gonna do today um, are things that, that we know they grew up doing and still do. Um, the, the stick work that we're gonna show you, again, can be done in a small space, but it can be done no matter what level you are. Whether you are an eight, nine year old beginning player or a high school player that has been playing for a couple years, this is stuff that is great to do um, daily. So let's get into it. All right, so first thing is we're just gonna start with some basic basic cradling, right hand and left hand. Um, Coach Natalie's gonna pick up a ball here and kind of demo for the girl side real quick. Yep, and so this cradling can be done with any type of ball too as well. I do have a lacrosse ball, but if your parents don't think you can use a lacrosse ball, it can also be done with a tennis ball. Coach Todd here has got a tennis ball. He's got a tennis ball with tape on it, so that way your parents think it's less likely to hit anything. Well, the tennis ball wrapped in tape also, it provides a little bit of weight, so it, it, it mimics the lacrosse ball feel a little better than just a regular tennis ball. You see we use these at Fuse a lot. Plus, it's cheap. Um, we also have these STX pinky balls. They're nice and soft, but have a good weight to them. We use those. And then, last but not least, last but not least, um, Swax Lax makes amazing balls. Uh, it, it's basically like a bean bag. Um, it's nice, soft, and squishy, but again, has some weight of a lacrosse ball. And then one, one old trick I actually used to use, um, my mom hated me having lacrosse balls uh, when I was maybe dodging on stools and chairs in the kitchen. So I would use a ball of socks, standard old ball of socks. It still, it still works and you can mimic the same as a ball. ball. Yep. But for the demonstration, we're gonna use a real ball just because we have a lot of space here. But we're just gonna start with simple cradling. So if you're right-handed, we'll start with your right hand. If you're left-handed like me, you'll start with your left hand. So just for girls across, you really wanna keep that stick inside that pocket right there. You wanna go from ear to nose, ear to nose. So really keeping it in ear to nose. 
arms inside that sphere and really using that shoulder to protect the stick. Yep. You're in a nose. You're in a nose. Just and keep doing those repetitions. Really start slow and then you can get a little bit faster as you get a little bit better at it. But really start that cradle. And boys lacrosse is, is similar. Again, we're going, we're going ear to nose as well, but we want to keep it a little tighter than the girls. Um, we don't have to worry about having our stick too close to our sphere. So we always want to keep it nice and tight. We want to make sure our shoulders are big and we're making ourselves um, really big when protecting it. So right now we're going to practice with just a little right hand and then switching to left. And then for girls too as well, make sure you're not moving that lower hand. That lower hand doesn't do much movement at all. It's all that top hand. Same thing for boys too as well. That lower hand just guides the stick. We have soft hands too as well. My hands aren't gripping the stick very hard. It's just nice and soft hands. Exactly. So, so. the left and I'll switch to my right. When we're cradling, we're using the top of our palms and our fingers. Really switch. Switch. We're pretending like there's a defender right in front of us here. And just cradling for a couple seconds and switching. And so we recommend doing about 15 to 20 of these. So everyone, if you're following along, hopefully you're kind of doing them with us. Um, if you're taking this and doing it at home, try to do about 15 and 20, 15 or 20 of those. All right. So we want to progress from that. So um, the next thing we're gonna we're gonna talk about is doing those against some against some cones. Um, so we we like to do. Um, so what's gonna happen next is well basically we're gonna progress to the next cradling. So we're gonna pr progress to switching hands. So we're really gonna pull the stick down like this. So we're working on going into our next thing, which is switching hands. My bad. I skipped one progression ahead. I'm sorry. So we're really pulling that stick down, light on our hands and really sliding the stick. Sliding that stick down. It's like a slippery slope. Yep. So to slow it down a little bit, you're just replacing as you're switching basically. That top hand is replacing on bottom. So this is one thing I used to do religiously at home was just walk around the house and practice switching hands. Slide in that stick. Yep. So then you can progress to actually switching those hands. So as I slide, I replace my hands. See, I'm replacing those hands. You can build up to be able to do it really quickly. Yep. And that comes from just practice. You can just walk around the house, just like Coach Shot said, just walking around. Slide in the stick down, slide in the stick down. Awesome. So now we're going to move on to something just a little bit more advanced and still working on soft hands. So we're going to call it finger taps. I don't know if you guys have played basketball, but it's where you tap them. So you're going to, we're going to go one like this. Finger taps, just tapping the stick back and forth. Back and so forth. So again, this is good practice for just using soft hands, our, our fingers and our palms. So you're not trying to grip it to death, right? You're basically... Just using your fingers and palms and going back and forth. And again, you can start slow and work up to where you go super quick. Super and you can fast. do this in, nice a, in a one nice. foot spot. It's nice and easy, nice and easy. Light on the hands. Make sure that you're trying to keep your feet in the same place too as well. You're not moving all over the place. And then just as we did with our cradling, we're gonna turn our shoulder and try to do it from the side. No matter what level you're at, you should be able to do this. Yep, it's definitely something you can progress up to. If it's not something you can do now, it's definitely something you can keep working on. So now we're going to go into a little bit more of just keeping the stick in the same place at the same time. So we're just going to go having it go up and down, just little, little hot, little throws right here. So practicing stuff with one hand is a great way to get your control down. Um, and again, it helps with soft hands. It builds your wrist strength. So, just so we're starting with our right, right hand, our strong hand right now. We're both righties. And we're, we're all, oh, I'm sorry, Natalie's the left hand. I'm starting with my right hand. And I'm going to do about 20 of these. 
And so it's Flip just basically flipping it up only about a foot. And then we'll switch to our wink in. I know it might be difficult for you at some point, but just nice, easy throws with that offhand. Nice and easy throws, nice and controlled. Controlled is what you're looking for. So it's almost like you're doing a little one-handed quick stick up and down. So see how our wrists are kind of giving when we're catching it? And then flipping it up, nice and controlled. So do about 20 of those as well. Next thing is we're gonna to progress to higher flips. So we realize some of you guys might not have as high ceilings as we have here. Um, this is probably recommended to do more outside, but again, if you're using a soccer ball or anything, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to worry about it too much, but just a little higher flip, a little more exaggerated. You're still not moving your feet. Your feet are still planted. But notice how Coach Natalie and I are catching it very softly, and then immediately it's coming back up. There's no delay, and after we're catching it. And we'll switch that weak hand. And then after that, you can get a little bit creative. Go underneath. Yep, so underneath. We, we like to always end with a fun part to every progression. So this way, yeah, we'll, we just call this freestyle. A little freestyle underneath so, the yep. legs. Behind the back, and then you can do like a combination of it. Behind the back. Exactly. And you can also go from finger taps to behind the back. Behind the back. I or I know a lot of girls like to go over the head like this. Yep. So that's our fun uh, little stick work progression. That's something that you guys can, again, just do as you're walking through your house, as you're watching your favorite movie, you could be watching something and doing that and still getting in some good work. Um, so next thing, we're gonna move on to footwork and dodging. So footwork and dodging, very, very important skills in lacrosse. And again, something you can practice in a small space. You don't need a big giant field uh, to work on this stuff. You guys can do this in your basement, in your garage, in your bedroom. Okay, so we're gonna start with three different dodges today. Yep, we're there's, gonna just review the basic dodges and then we'll get a little bit more. Exactly, and there's some dodges we're gonna leave out here, um, but we're just gonna work on three dodges today. So that's the face dodge, the split dodge, and the hitch dodge. So Coach Natalie's gonna demo the face dodge first and just talk about our basic face dodge from a girl's perspective. Yeah, so from the girl's perspective on the face dodge, what we're looking to do is fake one leg and then go the opposite way. So for all you right-handers out there, you should start with the ball in your right hand. And as you come up, if you have two cones, make sure you put the two cones together. Make a little defender right there. You can use anything. You could use pillows, you use water bottles. Almost anything will work just as a little defender. So as a face dodge, remember I'm stepping with my left foot and I'm pulling the stick over then I'm stepping back with my right. So what we're looking to do is think like I go left, but then go right. So go slow if this is something you've never done before, but if it's something you've done multiple times, just keep practicing it really quickly. Left, right. And then really quick, fast, left, right. It should be a quick movement as you advance. So two very important things when we're practicing our, our dodging and our footwork is we need to make sure we're changing speed and changing direction. Those are the two most important things when dodging. If you're not changing your speed and you're not changing your direction, you're not gonna throw off your defender. So when we're practicing these reps, we wanna make sure that we're really exploding out of our dodges. So again, show us another face dodge. So again, the dodge can be slow, but coming out of the dodge is where you need to be quick. That first step is your step around that defender. So it's left, right, and then moving around. We'll let Coach Todd go Perfect, same well. thing with boys. So just do a couple dodges, maybe six or seven, really work on exploding out of that dodge. And make sure you're going both hands, too. Yeah, do a couple right, and then a couple left. All right, now we're gonna move on to the split dodge. I think the split dodge, is probably the most important dodge in lacrosse. 
So the split dodge is being able to switch from right to left or from left to right. Um, very important that you're, that you're able to use both hands no matter what level you're at. So um, that's what some of the stuff we were working on with our stick work progression. Now we're carrying it up here into dodging. So Natalie's gonna do a split dodge for girls. Yep, and just to add to what Coach Sean said too as well, we're really using that shoulder to protect the stick as we're switching hands. So we're using the shoulder, and then I'm bringing my left hand in it. So really, right to left, dropping it low, and then on my left. My favorite split dodge is setting up like you're gonna go left and then splitting right. So I want that right-handed shot. So I like to come up, take a step like I'm going towards the left, and then I'm exploding to the right. And again, shoulder, shoulder, stick, where my defense would be. Yep, and Coach Chavez, you're using that shoulder for second stick. So a little faster speed. You're really settling like you're going left, but then you're going right. Yep. And make sure you're also practicing your other side. So start right. Plant, switch left. Yep. Right. Now a little faster speed. Good. You just go through that a couple times. Right. Cool. So guys, this area is not that big overall. We're doing this in kind of a 10 by 10 square probably. So you guys can do these exact things. So that's the face. That's the split. Now the third is the hitch dodge. On our next live stream, we'll get into some of the other dodges, roll dodge, um, maybe even a bull dodge for the boys, and some of, the other, some of our other favorite dodges. A hitch is essentially just kind of give it, just, just like what it sounds like. You're showing them a little hitch and then exploding. So you're giving that little stutter, that little hesitation, just enough to throw off your defender and then exploding out of it. Yep, the whole part of the hitch is really putting all that weight on your back foot and then going forward. So it's just a little, it goes back and then forward again. So you're really putting all the weight on your back foot and then going forward. Again, both sides. So everything we're showing you, try to do 15, 20 reps of those. I know we might be going through this a little quickly if you are trying to follow along, but just note everything we're doing, try to do 15 or 20 of those. And if you're having trouble with maybe one side or the other, try to focus a little more on what you're having trouble with. You guys know what you need to work on as lacrosse players, so work on what you need to work on. If you're feeling good about Maybe doing one side, like your right, your strong hand, your right side, let's say. Focus more on your left. Maybe up the up the, uh, the reps on that side. Yeah, and this video will also be posted on YouTube as well. So if you miss something, you'll be able to go back and see it again too as well. So don't exactly. worry if you miss something, you have to skip over something. Yep, and the live link is, um, it'll be online for 24 hours too. So please share, please show. All right, so that's the face split hitch, just with two cones. So next we're gonna um, show you a different progression with two cones, two things we can do. So we're gonna show you basically four different things you can do with only two cones in a small space. You can also do some of this stuff with a partner too as well if you have a partner. Yep. Bring them a little closer, a little closer together. There you go. So these are only about five, six feet apart right here. So we're gonna be doing our same three dodges. We're just gonna be doing them in different combinations now. So this next thing is what we call combination dodging. So Coach Natalie is gonna start with a split and then go into a face dodge. Okay, yep, yeah. so I'll split here and then I'll do a face dodge here. So it's one after the other, so we're just progressing, getting better at those dodges. Face split. dodge and then split dodge. Split then face. You're splitting? It also makes you think too. It makes you think yep. knowing what you're gonna do before you get to the Split, face. From there, you switch up what you're doing. So now let's go hitch into split. Yep, so hitch and then split. 
Hinge. Split. Split. Awesome. Then let's do face hitch. Face into hitch. Again, small area, just two cones. Change it up. Go, there, there's endless combinations, basically, of what you can do. You can also start to, well, you can start with the ball up in the air, catch it, face, pitch, and then go back. Just challenge yourself a little bit more. Yeah, so this, this that might be tougher for some of the beginning players, but very important for older players. Always train like you're in a game, you're doing it at game speed. So starting with that flip to yourself is simulating like you're getting a, a catch or, or getting a pass. All right, next progression. Um, so, stagger the cones. There you go. So now, as you can see, we just have the cones staggered. So again, still two cones set up. Now we're staggering them, and we're gonna work on our dodging into pulling out, and then re-dodging. In lacrosse, all offense always starts with a dodge, right? But sometimes the defense is maybe forcing you one way where you don't want to go and are forcing you into a double team, where then you need to pull out and then look for a way to re-dodge. So that's what we're practicing right here. So we're staggering the cones, again, only about five feet apart. So we're, these are simulating the defense. So we're going to be dodging off the first cone, pulling back out, and then re-dodging. Yep, so if I come in here, I might do the face dodge, get denied, and then have So try to get a good 10 reps in doing this, making sure you're using, again, both, both sides. So 10 reps with your left, 10 reps with your right. And change it up a little bit to where one, one of those reps, you're practicing the split dodge as your, as your re-dodge. Maybe the, the next set of reps, you're practicing the face dodge as your re-dodge. Again, work on what you need to work on. You guys know what, what needs work. So they're about six feet apart in here, I would say. So um, you can do a ton of different things with, with what we call figure eights. And when we're able to get outside and on a goal, there's even a lot more you can do with finishing. Um, for this right now, we're gonna, we're gonna work on our cradling back and forth and our footwork through these figure eights. So um, Coach Natalie, start at one cone. And so basically, again, these, these cones are acting as defenders. We're going to want to keep the stick to the outside as we're figure eighting through these cones. Simulating, again, the shoulder-shoulder stick and protecting our stick as we're cradling through. Having, having a nice figure eight to go through gives you a good, a good way to practice on changing direction in a small space. Yep, so it's just a figure eight. It's on my outside. I go around. It's still on my outside. And you're I'm also switching. practicing your, your uh, switch dodges, split dodges, as you're doing that. There's some fun little progressions that you can do with this too, where you can add in a ground ball. So you're starting, picking up the ground ball, going around the outside, laying it back down, around the outside, picking it up again, outside, laying it down, back and forth, back and forth. 
working on your explosiveness, your change of direction, um, all that sort of stuff, and stick protection, which is, which is the most valuable part of this drill. Yep. Um, all right, so you can also, once you get outside too and have a partner to work with, uh, do some fun progressions with this with a partner. So we're gonna show you that real quick. I'm gonna do the partner, and Natalie's gonna pass to. So she's gonna go through her figure eights, give me a feed, I'll be passing back to her. And she'll be catching going through. in a small space, very easy to do. Um, so that, that concludes our two cone footwork dodging section uh, of the live stream. And we're gonna finish with doing some stuff with on, on the wall. So give us one second, we're gonna adjust the camera over here for the wall. All right, we realize you know it's pretty rainy out today. It might not be the best day to get out on the wall, but there are nice days ahead. And as we always stress in practice, um, all the time, the wall should be your best friend and it's to get tons of reps, tons of touches, um, and really that's how you become great with your stick work. I can't tell you how many countless hours I put, put in at the, on, on the wall. Um, there was a school about a mile away from my house and so, uh, every day after school, I would, I would run about a mile with my stick, with my ball to the wall, put in about a half an hour to an hour of wall ball, and then run home. And that was, that was my off season training. And it got me really good. So um, we're gonna show some of our favorite wall ball routines. We're gonna start kind of simply and then work our way up. So if you were a beginning player and maybe struggling with um, doing the basic wall ball stuff, just stick with that. Master that before you move on to the tougher progressions. Yep, so we'll start with just basic left and right. So you'll start with your strong hand, just bringing it back. Make sure you're pulling all the ball all the way back. If you're a girl, make sure you're asking for it out front and then pulling it back. Give it a nice cradle. And when we step, we step with our opposite foot. So if you're in your left hand, you're stepping with your right. If in your right hand, you're stepping with your left. The thing a lot of people don't realize when they're doing wall ball is they develop a lot of bad habits because they are not stepping with the ball and putting all the motion into your throw. So really make sure you're stepping with that foot and then you're really asking for it out front when you're pulling it back. So just simple 25 to 50, just depending on your level, pulling it back, cradle, stepping into it, pulling it back, cradle. Keeping our eye on the ball the entire time. This goes for boys and girls, same thing. Also, try to aim for a specific brick on the wall to really get dialed in with your accuracy. Don't just be throwing it willy-nilly. Really focus in on trying to aim for that specific target. And I'll also, like Coach Natalie was saying, make sure you're on your toes, on the balls of your feet, kind of moving. Don't be standing in place with bad footwork. That's not how we play. Always stepping into the throw. Yep. Or with our right, stepping into it. So this is a great warm up. Just 25 left, 25 right. So our next progression of that is gonna be, we're gonna be still throwing in one hand but then and, and catching in one hand, but we're gonna catch on the opposite side of our body. So she, net Coach Natalie's gonna be throwing left, but then catching it on her right side. So literally, you wanna throw it a little bit towards your right, so it's just easier to catch it, but really make sure you're Cool, then switch to your right hand. Right. And now she's going right and catching right. Even coaches drop balls sometimes, it's all right. Take it back up and continue. So she's catching it on the opposite side. So as we all know, you don't always get that perfect pass in a game. So this is simulating catching a, a pass that's maybe slightly off and working at that. So I like to do 25 left, 25 right with that progression as well. So then your next one is going to be what we 
I know is, is kind of an awkward throw and not something you're necessarily gonna, gonna be using in a game. But again, this is, this is working on catching and throwing in all different angles. Um, and, and, you know, because in a game, you, you get passes to you in a lot of different ways. And so this helps with just overall control um, with your stick and your body and your hand. So continue to do that a little bit more. Yep, so throwing it up. You're still throwing normally, but you're just catching, throwing it over across your body. So as I move it, I move it over, throwing it off. All right, and our next progression is going to be throwing and catching right, switching to throwing and catching left. And so this is also helping to work on our change of direction and our split dodging. So this is actually my favorite routine to do on the wall um, because it's, it's working all of those type of things. Um, it's working on receiving, receiving a pass with soft hands, but then immediately exploding, getting your hands free to make a pass, take a shot type of thing. So you either start left or start right. I'm starting left here. So throwing left, catching, splitting to your right, throwing, catching, splitting. Or right now let's split that. Yeah, once you speed it up, you're going a lot quicker. Demo, demo girl side. And it's okay if you can't go super fast to start off. Or if your ball is happening. This is probably my favorite overall wall ball exercise because it's really working on a little bit of everything. Cool. Some of the, some of the last um, other wall ball things that you can do and that we're going to do for today are just using one hand again. Um, and that's just, it's helping our wrist strength, our control, our accuracy, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so it's the same thing. Don't be afraid to bring your hand up on the sit too as well. You get more control by doing that. It really makes you focus in on the, the proper fundamentals of catching and throwing as well. Because um, you, if you're doing it with improper form, you're not going to be able to do it. The ball is going to bounce out of your stick. It's not going to throw properly. So really get that arm up. You're really rotating and, your body. And I, I recommend having your top hand kind of right in the middle of your stick. That's why I have this little piece of tape right here. That's where I want my top hand. And he's rotating his whole body. Awesome. Well, yeah. well, thanks, Serge. Really appreciate it. I hope you guys learned something. Can't wait to see you guys next Tuesday. Feel free to ask us any questions you may have. Shoot us emails or texts. Um, and we also want to see those videos of you guys practicing. Yes. So please send us your videos of you guys doing either this routine or your own routine. Uh, just anything. Just show us putting in, putting in the work with that stick while you're at home. We'd love to feature you on our social media. And if you do a really great job, we will we'll send you something special. Uh, we have some cool giveaways that we that we want to do, but we want to see that you guys are doing the work first. So please, please show us. Um, and again, give us any feedback on how we can um, make this better and do more things that maybe you want to see. But please, please, please don't let that stick get dusty while we're sitting at home right now. Put in that work, and we'll see you guys back on the field very soon. Yeah, text us if you guys text us or email us with anything that you might want to see in these videos or any questions. All right, take care everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy.